I'm Mark Hanley, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. While I like advancements in the saltwater tank hobby, and I like tinkering with my tank, I'm not going to add something new to my system or a client system just because it sounds cool. And while I like adding carbon sources to a tank, I'm only going to do it when the tank actually needs it. I'm not simply just going to throw it at a tank because it sounds cool. Now, I've talked a lot about listening to your tank and letting it tell you when it needs it, so how do you know when your tank needs to add a carbon source? Well, you have to do everyone's favorite topic, which is test, and then track your results. Until my nitrates are consistently over 10 parts per million and my phosphates are consistently over 0.2 parts per million, I'm not gonna add a carbon source. Until those levels are reached, my tank doesn't have a nutrient problem in my opinion. No nutrient problem, no carbon source needed. If you add a carbon source to a tank that doesn't have a nutrient issue, you can make the system ultra low nutrients and or cause a cyano or dinoflagellates outbreak. Once you see that your tank needs a carbon source and you've decided to go down the addition of a carbon source to your tank, you've got a choice to make. You're either going to go with the liquid carbon dosing route or add in a solid carbon source to your tank. Now I'm going to talk to you about both of those approaches in just a minute, but keep this in mind. First of all, Adding carbon dose to your tank or adding a carbon source to your tank doesn't mean activated carbon. Totally different thing. When I'm talking about carbon dosing or adding a carbon source, mainly through that solid means, I'm talking about bio pellets or a liquid dosing product such as Red Sea's Nopox or Polyp Lab's Refresh System. So don't get those two confused. Also, whether you're doing the liquid carbon dose or the solid carbon source, you need a well-functioning protein skimmer for these methods to work. Relying on water changes alone won't get the job done. Liquid carbon, also known as carbon dosing, requires a liquid carbon product such as Red Sea's Nopox or Polyp Lab's Refresh System. You can add these products manually to your tank, but consistency is the name of the game, so automatically dosing them via dosing pump is best. Don't forget your phosphate and nitrate test kits so you can check your nutrient levels. Now don't wing it, make sure you have both a nitrate and phosphate test kit and that they haven't expired. Adding a solid carbon source is usually done by bio pellets. When you use bio pellets, you're going to need a bio pellet reactor, and here's one common mistake people make with bio pellets. It's common that people hear bio pellet reactor and they think, oh, I'll just put bio pellets in my media reactor. Now this won't work because bio pellets are growing bacteria and that bacteria gets sloughed off. So if you just put your bio pellets in your media reactor, the bacteria is going to gum up on those sponges in that media reactor and the whole thing is going to fall apart. Now, some media reactors have special inserts that make them into bio pellet reactors. For example, Two Little Fishies Fosbane reactor has an insert that then makes it okay for bio pellets. Adding bio pellets to a bag and placing them in your sump won't work either. You want those bio pellets to tumble, you want water moving through them to create that tumble to slough off that bacteria. So don't put them in a bag, it's just simply not gonna work. Now, talking about tumble, here's a tumble that you do want in your bio pellet reactor. We've got a gentle tumble going on here. It's like a gentle boil. The bio pellets are moving, but they're not grinding. We've talked about liquid carbon dosing and adding a solid carbon source to your tank, but how do you decide which route is best for you? There are a couple considerations. First of all, space. If you don't have a lot of space in your sump, you're not gonna have space for a bio pellet reactor. Now remember, you can take a meaty reactor and convert it into a bio pellet reactor but if you're already cramped for space, maybe you don't even have a media reactor on your system, the bio pellet reactor might not work for you. Now you can run it outside of your sump. I like to keep things in my sump, so if that media reactor leaks for any reason, it leaks back in my system. Also, complexity of the system. Some of you don't like tech, which I understand. Some of you like to keep it simple, which I also understand. Liquid carbon dosing, to really make it work well, you're gonna need a carbon dosing pump. Really just a dosing pump of any sort will do. Now, that's gonna require some amount of tech. Maybe it's a standalone dosing pump. Maybe it's one that requires some kind of controller. To really make that work, you're gonna need that dosing pump. Now, can you do it manually? Yes, but look, consistency is the name of the game. You need to add that carbon source every single day, ideally a little bit throughout the day, every day. So, think about it when you go into town. Are you really gonna ask your tank buddy to come over to your house every day and liquid carbon source your tank? Or are you gonna ask your neighborhood kid, say, hey, Take this thing and put this much in my tank. And by the way, if you add too much, it's gonna cause a lot of problems. Yeah, not a risk that I'm willing to accept. Now, don't get me wrong. 
liquid carbon dosing certainly works. I ran my own 90 gallon tank on it, it worked well, and I ran it off a dosing pump. I'm not saying don't do it, I'm just saying it's more of a tech involved type of approach and it's gonna require you constantly refilling that carbon liquid dose that you have to add to your tank. Now, solid carbon dosing, you need a bio pellet reactor, you're gonna need some kind of bio pellet in there, and then that's really it. Get the tumble rate right, Every now and then you need to add more bio pellets because they're gonna get used up. We'll talk about that in a bit, but that's really it. So either approach of these will work. Choose the one that's best for you and then stick to it. Don't go, hey, look, I'm gonna liquid carbon dose. And you try it for two weeks and you go, nah, this isn't gonna work. I'm gonna go over here and try bio pellets. Oh, I tried that for a month, that didn't work. I'm gonna switch over here. Take a path, go down that path for at least a couple months and see what kind of results you get. Once you have what you need, for adding the carbon source of your choice to your tank, then what? Here's what you do. You test. Test your nitrates, test your phosphates, and then write those results down. We have to know where we're starting from. Okay, so we've done that. Now what? Well, then read the instructions for the carbon source that you're adding and start slow. And here's why. With anything, even if you're carbon dosing, if the manufacturer says add, you know, one ounce per 50 gallons, add one ounce per 200 gallons. Cut it way back initially because no one knows your system. And every system is different to the level of organics, phosphates, and nitrates. And if it's, it's much easier to start slow, fewer pellets, less carbon dosing, and work up rather than pour it all in and basically start a bonfire in your aquarium in an, al in an algae bloom definitely start slow and work up. Start with that initial small dose or small amount of bio pellets and then wait two weeks. Simply do nothing. Wait two weeks and then go back and test your nitrates and your phosphates and see if anything has changed. Here's the deal. If nothing has changed, that's okay. Remember, we're taking it slow. We're gonna work up to the dose or the amount of bio pellets that our tank needs. So we've gone two weeks and we've seen no change or a small amount of change. We're not where we want to be in terms of our nutrients. Then what? Take the same amount of liquid carbon dose or bio pellets that you added initially and add it again. You're basically doubling your dose. Again, we're starting with a small dose though. We're not doubling to get up to what the manufacturer recommends as a full dose. Then wait two weeks. Why are we waiting two weeks? Remember, it takes time for that bacteria to grow that's getting fed by that carbon source. You gotta give nature a chance to do its thing. So wait those two weeks, see what we get. We're gonna add the same amount that we added before, wait two weeks and test again. You're just gonna repeat this process until you get to the nutrient levels where you want to be. And here's the part where a lot of people made mistakes with bio pellets and adding a liquid carbon source back in the day, 10 years ago when it was super popular. They simply said, oh, I need to add this much. They toss it into their system and they left it alone. The system may not have needed that much of a dose, so it pulled those nutrients down. In your case, you're going slow, you're adding a little bit, adding a little bit, adding a little bit until you get your nutrients where you want them. For me, those numbers are between three and 10 parts per million nitrates and 0.03 to 0.10 parts per million phosphates. Once you've got your nutrients where you want them, then stop increasing your carbon dose or your amount of bio pellets in your tank. But here's the thing, don't stop completely. If we're adding a carbon source and we get where we want to be, then we go whoosh, we pull the rug out of underneath your tank, we've stopped adding that carbon source, the bio pellets or the bacteria in your tank aren't gonna get fed anymore and then your nutrient level is gonna rise again. Then you may add it all back and your tank's gonna start going like this. So we slowly add until we get where we want to be and then we go, okay, this is how much bio pellets or how much liquid carbon dose we need to maintain this level and then we just let it ride. Now, keep in mind, if you change anything in your system, let's say you add more fish, which is gonna add more nutrients into your system, or you start feeding more, or you add a frag tank to your system, which is gonna dilute your nitrates and your phosphates. Well, at that point, then you need to reevaluate. Test your tank, did your nitrate levels come up or come down, your phosphates levels as well, do we need to add more or take away potentially some from our carbon addition to our tank? There's a give and take here, but don't get me wrong. I'm not saying every day you gotta come in here and test. Once a week, I test my nitrates and I test my phosphates and I make sure everything's on track. For the most part, after that, you're just letting it ride and you're gonna enjoy your system a lot more because you're very likely not gonna have algae problems, you're not gonna have cyano problems, and your corals are gonna get fed constantly by that nutrient-rich bacteria, so you're likely gonna see better color on your coral and better coral growth as well. 
Now, keep in mind, with a liquid carbon source, you gotta replenish that. You gotta make sure you have liquid in the bottle. And with bio pellets, like I'm running on my system, over time, those bio pellets are gonna get eaten up by the bacteria. You're gonna have to add more of them. It is set and forget it, but you can't totally walk away. The amount of additions, the amount of nudging you have to do with adding a carbon source is actually very small, but the rewards are very, very big. I'm a big fan of adding a carbon source to a tank when the tank needs it. And any tank is gonna tell you when it needs it if you're willing to do the work, test it, and then track your results. You're gonna see it in the data. It'll be right there in front of you that you can't maintain your nutrients with water changes alone. So that's how you set up your carbon dosing or your carbon source, whichever route you'd go. In the next episode, I'm gonna to talk to Dr. Tim about some best practices, some common traps that people fall into when it comes to carbon sources, as well as take away some of that bad information that's out there around adding a carbon source to your tank. Till the next episode, I'm Mark Cowley and Mr. Saltwater Tank. Come and tell me half of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.